guys welcome back thank you so much for watching this is yet another video in the dream lovers series so i hope you guys are enjoying them and being blessed by them and god is just taking you to new levels with your gifting that is my desire and my passion through this um you may have noticed that i'm almost always wearing a pink shirt in my videos sometimes that's intentional and sometimes it's not intentional um it's kind of been a thing that i did for a long time and so i just kind of stuck with it but uh this morning i didn't realize that i was going to do a video and put this shirt on and here we are so it's like i said it's just a thing that happened if you're wondering why does she always wear a pink shirt in her videos so now you know anyway today i'm going to share sorry about that today i'm going to share um a dream that's god coloration as i like to share um trust me i have plenty of dreams that aren't god coloration but one of the reasons i like to share um, god coloration dreams is because it is from god and it gives us an idea of the language that he speaks so that we can tell a truth we can tell a truth from a lie okay um so I'll, i i want to share it it's god coloration i had this dream probably i'm gonna say maybe a week and a half two weeks ago um, when I was going through something and you'll see that kind of reflected in here and I'm gonna read it I have some notes and some we'll play Pictionary and you can decide what this is <laughs> no you'll you'll see why this is important in a minute just give you a visual of that and um, yeah so this is called a uh, pass-through there was some small pass-through I had to go through to get outside it was like a window right above a door I felt it was too small and I wouldn't fit. I guess I noticed there were pieces there above this window that could be moved out of the way. They were like chunks of wood, but I didn't move them because it wasn't my house and I didn't know if the owner wanted them moved and I didn't want to be rude and just start moving things. I had a hat on and I took that off thinking that should give me some more room. I think there was also like a heat lamp above um, above the door that I didn't want to burn myself on. My pastor walked by and saw me staring at it like, how am I going to get through this? And said something like, huh, no one's taking that down yet, I guess. I said, it's probably keeping out bugs and snakes. He just smiled at me and walked out. And then I started taking pieces out here and there, trying to get the hole big enough um, to get through so so that is the the dream and here's a picture of the door the thing that I didn't put there was the heat lamp and there was some sort of like you know I don't know a heat lamp right here it was on and it was very hot it seemed like but anyway just for a visual this is the door here there I why I didn't go through the door, I don't know, but there was definitely a door there, um, but that's how dreams are, okay? So I'm trying to fit through this right here, okay? And I know that my body isn't gonna fit through there, so there's all these little chunks of wood right here that I know can be moved and probably buy me a little more space, but it's not my house and I don't want to be rude and start moving things that don't belong to me, okay? So, all right, first of all, it's God coloration. We walked through that. Let me see if I get you closer. I'm sure there's an easier way, but I am really not tech savvy. My husband is. So um, anyway, so it was God coloration, as I mentioned, okay? Second, I always say this, whatever is said or thought can, not always, but can be the whole, um, can hold the whole entire interp interpretation. And this, um, I, I find this far more often in, in God coloration uh, dreams. And once again, let me just recap in case you're just starting watching these videos and you don't know what God coloration is. It's what I call it. I don't know, you know, that's just what I named it. But um, I have noticed in my dreams that they're not all taken from the, the same lens, so to speak. So I don't mean coloration like, oh, there was blue animals and you know that type of thing. When I say coloration, I mean the, the lens. Like when you take a picture, you can change the filter on it. Sapia, um, you know, black and white, gray, all those things exist in dreams. But I have found there is one that's very similar to a sapia um, that is a, what I call God coloration. And it is something I've seen 
seen tried and true, tested it many times, um, and is hands down what I consider God coloration. Okay, so it's God coloration, and in these types of dreams, a lot of times what is said or thought is so very important and holds the key to the interpretation. So what did, what was being said and what was being thought in the dream, okay? Because that, and that isn't always, but this specific type of dream um, is interpreted this way. And it's much easier for the dreamer themselves to look at that and be like, oh yeah, um, I'm going through something like that and I can relate to this than to hear a dream from another person. So once you're learning about God coloration dreams and you hear the language and someone tells you a dream, not only are you going to be able to start knowing um, what the interpretation is through God's spirit, of course, and much um, prayer and practice through him, but also sometimes people tell me a dream and I can almost tell what coloration the dream is. That's, it's something the Lord and I are still working on and developing, um, but, uh, but it has happened many times. I can say, I bet your dream was such and such coloration. Okay. So in the dream, I said, and I, I thought to myself, right, my pastor walks by and, um, I th was thinking he watched me he saw me looking at this like, huh, how am I going to get through this? Okay, so that is a play on words and it's super important because that is what the whole dream consists of. It's a situation going on in my life that I'm wondering how I'm going to get through this. Okay, so he, he used this illustration in a dream of, of a door and a window and all these tiny pieces, but all it was is it's, it's a metaphoric, you know, an analogy of what's going on in my life and how I'm looking for a solution to how am I going to get through X, Y, Z that's going on in my life. Okay. So I'm looking at this. How am I going to get through this? Like, huh? And I see that there's pieces up here, but I don't want to move them because it's not my house. Okay. And that's kind of rude. Just going to someone's house and like pulling these, you know, chunks out. What if they wanted it there? Right? So the next thing I want to comment on is my pastor. Okay. This was my pastor's house and he's the owner of the house and he walks by and says, huh, I guess no one's moved that yet. Okay. So that kind of gave me permission in my heart to, oh, he doesn't mind if I move it. Okay. And we'll talk about that more in a minute, but who is my pastor in the dream? My pastor is someone that I honor spiritually, okay? And so because of that, your pastor in your dreams can, not always, can represent the Lord, okay? He has many times come to me as my pastor or my dad, right? Your father in heaven, okay? And I don't want to just um, confuse anyone just by throwing a few things out there, but I only, I just want the point across to you that it doesn't always mean that. Okay. You could be dreaming about your pastor, right? God could be giving you a God coloration dream, um, showing you something that's going on in your pastor's life, you know, or, um, your pastor might represent something else, whatever it is that God says it is. Okay. But a lot of times he does use symbols of people that we honor spiritually or honor as a Lord, as a ruler, um, in our lives to, re um, represent him. Okay. So it's his house. Notice it's his house. All things belong to him, right? Everything belongs to him. Um, God, I mean, not my pastor. <laughs> so, so this is the Lord here. Okay. And my, my concern is I don't want to move anything because it doesn't belong to me. All right. And he walks by and says, huh, nobody's moved that yet. Like he doesn't mind if it's moved. And of course I said, um, it's probably keeping bugs or snakes out. Cause when you look at it logically, if you saw this in real life, you'd think, oh, they, they covered up every crevice. There was, must've been a gap there, you know, between the window and the window seal or, and they, they covered it up. So bugs and snakes wouldn't get in. Right. So I'm thinking like, you know, literally and logically in this situation. And he just kind of smiles at me and walks out of the room. Okay. But he got his point across to me when I woke up and knew what this dream meant. Okay. And so I've always told you guys many times is that, um, and I, I have a video out and I mentioned it in my last video that I put out. Uh, it just keeps coming up in conversations with people, but it's called, should we move mountains? Okay. So if you haven't seen that video yet, go and watch it. And the thing, the thing of it is, is that yes, we need faith the size of a mustard seed to move a mountain. Right. Um, however, you can have faith the size of a mustard seed and tell a mountain to move, but if it is not the Lord's will, 
the mountain's going nowhere, okay? So that's the basis of what that video is about. And so I kind of am in a situation where it's like, I don't wanna be one of those aggressive, you know, uh, I don't know, spoiled rotten children of God that is like, I say no to that in Jesus' name. And God's like, well, you know, I actually have that going on in that person's life right now to develop X, Y, Z. He's got reasons for the purposes and things that he does and allows, okay? Um, he allows Satan to test us. He allows Satan to, to do things sometimes so that we will grow from it, okay? And I want, I don't want to be like, you know, uh, casting things down that aren't of him, right? And the Bible says, when we ask according to his will, he hears us, okay? And so we have to find that balance. And so I prayed about that and I was like, God, what am I supposed to do? Just go up to this person and try to command this demon to come out and it's not, is it wasn't your will, you know, I don't know, maybe you were using it for something, who knows, you know, I just had these conversations with him. And so he told me, I guarantee that if you told that mountain to move and it wasn't my will, the mountain would go nowhere. Okay, so in my life as I walk along and I go through things, sometimes I'm con I get kind of confused as to, okay, Lord, is this your will or is this not your will? I see that I could get through this if I could just move these pieces out of the way, but I don't want to move those pieces and be like one of those Christians that is just like, why well, say no to that in Jesus' name and not even know what God's will is and his purpose and his plan, okay? And so he's walking by and saying, oh, no one's moved that yet, which tells me since he's the owner of the house, he doesn't mind if it's moved. Okay, so he's just letting me know in this area of my life that I'm wondering how I'm going to get through this. He's saying, move away, girl. Move those pieces all you want. Tell them to be cast off in Jesus' name. You remove whatever obstacles are in your way right now because this is my will for you to get through this. Okay, so that's the interpretation in a nutshell, there's pieces to the dream I don't understand, like I didn't understand what it meant to take my hat off. A um, couple other things in there that I was like, huh, you know, I don't understand, but I understand the fullness of it. I understand the main concept of it, and that is what's key. You know, those other pieces can come along later. So always, always interpreting dreams, not by might, not by power, but by his spirit. Yes, there's a little bit of practice that goes into it. I have been learning dreams over the past um, six years as if it were a language, because it, it pretty much is, okay? And so there's grace needed for learning a new language. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, but, you know, we have to get it from the source. We gotta get it from the source, asking the source, what does this word mean? In other words, you know, how do I put this sentence together, right? If you're learning a new language and you had a, a person that was a professional in that language, you would ask them those questions, you know, how can we, you know, that type of thing. Okay. So not by might, not by power, but by God's spirit, we interpret dreams. But yes, there are some bits of practice and definitely prayer. Prayer and fasting is a huge, huge way. And I, I hands down stand by it and it has given me so much a revelation and um, knowledge towards understanding this language, so to speak, of dreams and visions, okay? And so, um, but I've said before in, in past videos, journal your dreams journal them, make a habit to do it every single morning, right after you have it. And I go to my prayer time. Sometimes I wake up and I don't remember dreaming anything. I go to my prayer time also in the morning. And I say, Lord, if I dreamed anything that you wanted me to remember, please help me to recall. And then I'll be doing laundry or something and it'll just, you know, click in my mind and I write it down, you know, but try to journal your dreams down and do it every day. And then kind of give yourself like this introspective, um, analytical, you know, search inside of you. Am I going through something that I feel like I can't get through? How am I going to get through this, right? I had a dream kind of similar to um, this one time with a window and the interpretation was I was concerned about fitting in, okay? So he uses things like this, symbols like this to to kind of get the words out of our mouth so that he can say, yes, that right there, you know. Um, but doing that kind of, being truthful and honest with yourself, being in a very honest place with yourself, that can take time. 
Um, that's something you should also practice. We are to practice righteousness. That is a thing. It's not something that we just have to wait around for this gift of righteousness. We are to practice righteousness and not practice lawlessness, okay? So to to as you use it as your devotion time too, you know, part of your devotion time, so much time for reading. I do at least a half hour of Bible reading in the morning, at least a half hour of prayer. Sometimes I'm in there longer and... Um, and then I journal my dreams, okay? And that's kind of like I'm still soaking. I'm still marinating, asking the Lord about them. Sometimes I don't have time to pray about my dreams right then. Um, if I remember them, they're prominently on my mind, I'd pray about them in my prayer time, you know? Um, other times I come back to them a few days later, and I'm still asking for wisdom and knowledge and revelation and that sort of thing. But really just being doing a search within yourself, do I feel this way? What's going on in my life? What are what are big issues in my life? Because I find that the Lord speaks to us most about the big issues, the things that concern us the most. He is answering us. It's just we don't understand the language, okay? Dreams have been hidden for so long, and it's such a beautiful language, a beautiful way for Him to communicate with us, okay? So just, you know, make it a habit to journal your dreams. Um, it doesn't have to be anything fancy right away. Just journal them. Ask yourself some questions. Am I feeling like, you know, was there something big going on in my life? What are the things concerning me? What are some questions? What are some tiny prayers? Because he answers prayers through dreams, right? Um, giving us wisdom. And, and so this was something for me. It was like, I, it was something I prayed about. I was like, Lord, I, I want to do this and I feel like this is your will, but I also don't want to offend you by saying X, Y, and Z and it not being your will, you know, in my prayer time. And so this was his response to me. Okay. So really asking God to keep us pure in heart, taking a look in the mirror every day at ourselves in our prayer time and being truthful with our thoughts being truthful with our emotions, being truthful. Why do I feel this way? What made me feel this way? What, um, you know, maybe it was something from your past. Maybe it was something from your childhood. Am I guilty of this? Yes. When I responded this way, did I respond with a pure heart or did I have hidden agendas and motives? Okay. So, um, yeah, that's it for today. I love you guys. Um, if you're looking for another series to watch on dreams and you haven't seen it yet, please watch the Dreams and Visions in the Bible series that I'm putting out. It's going to be super good. All right. God bless.